Hello fellow astronomy fans and welcome back for another star show. It's Nicole again here with the next Sky Tonight episode where I'll talk about one of the planets that you can see tonight especially, some other constellations you can see later this summer, and also a celebration of National Moon Day which is today on July 20th. So that's the first thing we're going to do is visit our own moon. And since it is a new moon today, it might be a little difficult to see in the evening sky. Actually, you won't be able to find it at all, but we're able to witness it using this Uniview software. So National Moon Day commemorates the day that man first walked on the moon in July 20th of 1969 during the Apollo 11 mission. Now, NASA reported this moon landing as the single greatest technological achievement of all time. I think everyone recognizes the words that Neil Armstrong first said when he first stepped on the moon. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And I think that still stands true even as we attempt to explore the moon later this decade. So here we are at the moon. Like I said, this is especially important now since NASA looks to have humans back on the surface by 2024 in anticipation of future missions to Mars. So they'll set up a lunar base and use this as a stepping stone before we make our way to the red planet. So just remember that National Moon Day is to commemorate the first ever moon landing and be sure to celebrate that on July 20th. For the second main event of July 20th, we have the opposition of Saturn. So if you remember last week, I talked about the opposition of Jupiter, which is the best time to see and photograph a planet since it is the largest and brightest at that time. Now, as we're getting further away from Earth, I want to show you why we're at the opposition of Saturn at this time of the year. So here we've got an overview look of the solar system. Now I want to start by putting up some labels so you can easily see what planet we're looking at. And first I'm just going to put up Earth, so the third planet from our Sun here. But we've got to get a little bit further away in order to see Saturn, since it is much more distant. And Saturn is the second gas giant planet in our solar system. And here is the label of its orbit right there. Get a little bit closer again and you can see why opposition is one of the best times to view these planets. So this occurs when Earth flies in between the Sun and Saturn. You can see there's Earth, here's the Sun, and if you can draw a straight line, Saturn is on the exact opposite side of our own Sun. So it rises in the east around sunset and climbs highest up north around midnight. Again, it'll set in the west around sunrise, so it is exactly opposite the sun rising and setting. And now we'll make our way to the planet Saturn and we'll talk about some interesting facts about it. It's a gas giant planet mostly made up of hydrogen and helium, has no solid surface, and also has the most moons of any planet in the solar system. So remember last week we talked about Jupiter, which had 79 moons, but Saturn has the solar system record at a grand total of 82. And you'll see the orbit lines of its moons as we get a little bit closer. I think Saturn is most famous for its rings, which are large chunks of ice and rock that can be the size of grains of sand to larger than tall buildings. Now the rings themselves are actually relatively thin. They're only about 20 meters thick across. So you can see they almost disappear when we look at it from the side here. If you think about that size, they're very small compared to the massive size of this planet. So Saturn will be at opposition around 10 o'clock at night on July 20th. Now, opposition occurs about every year for Saturn around the same time, except two weeks later. So if you were to look for this next year, it would be around August time. And as we switch back to the Solarium program, I'll again point out where you can see both Jupiter and Saturn in the nighttime sky. It will be one of the best times to see both of these since it is a new moon. And the light reflected off of the moon won't get in the way with your stargazing be able to see these bright planets a lot more. Using Stellarium, we can see that Jupiter and Saturn are very visible in the southeastern sky, 
Again, look for those two on July 20th for some of the best viewing options. If you have a telescope and you aim it at Saturn, you might be able to get a glimpse of the rings. So for the next part of the show, I'm going to talk about some of the other constellations you can see in the summertime. Starting with a very bright star that is super easy to identify. And I'm talking about this one over here, already nicely labeled for us, called Antares. Now Antares is easy to spot because of that bright red-orange color. In fact, the name means anti-Aries or anti-Mars since it is sometimes mistaken for Mars in the nighttime sky. They look very similar. Now this star is a binary star, about 12 million years old, and it's close to the end of its lifetime and will soon explode into a supernova and then turn into a black hole at the very, very end. But it is too far away to impact us at all. Over 550 light years away, meaning that if it exploded today, we wouldn't find out about it for over 550 years. Now the name also means Heart of the Scorpion, and that is because it is located in the constellation Scorpius. Now this is one of the zodiac constellations, meaning that it lies on the path of the ecliptic, which is the apparent path of the sun across the sky. And actually, the sun spends the least amount of time in this constellation compared to all the other ones in the zodiac. This is the shape of the scorpion, first identified by the Greek astronomer Ptolemy in the 2nd century and is known as one of the ancient constellations. It's best for evening viewing and July and August are the prime time months that you can see it in the southern sky. So it gets highest around 9 o'clock at night and it never climbs very far from the horizon uh, as you can see it from the mid northern latitudes. It also has a lot of deep sky objects, such as open clusters and globular clusters. It's home to many exoplanets, ranging from extremely old age to potentially habitable planets that we might be able to survive on. Now in mythology, the scorpion stinger is said to bring about the death of Orion the hunter. So when these two constellations were commemorating the heroes in the sky, they place both of these enemies on opposite edges of the sky, meaning that you never see the two constellations together at the same time. So Orion only rises in the east after Scorpius sets in the southwest. And that's why Scorpius is one of the summertime constellations, but you really only see Orion in the later time of the year in the winter months. Now, a different spin of mythology. This is not seen as a scorpion, but instead as the magic fish hook used by the demigod Maui to pull up the islands from the ocean floor that later became Hawaii. So just remember to look for Antares, that bright red-orange star, to identify the rest of the scorpion constellation or the fish hook shape if that helps you to remember it a little bit better. So now we're going to travel to directly east of Scorpius and find another constellation and popular asterism, which you can see during the summer. Next up is the constellation Sagittarius, also one of the zodiac constellations depicting a centaur holding a bow and arrow. And as you can see from the images, it's depicted as aiming an arrow towards the heart of the scorpion, which is Antares. Now it's very easy to find since it lies on the Milky Way and you can see the outline of our galaxy from our viewpoint inside it here. And you can really only see that in real life, a very, very dark area with little to no light pollution nearby. So if you're able to get to a secure location where there isn't much obstructing your view, you might be able to see that cloudy shape of the Milky Way. Now the Milky Way is at its densest near Sagittarius since that is where the galactic center lies and that's why we're able to see it around this area. Right in the middle here is what's known as the teapot asterism. So that contains some of its brightest stars and might help you better find the rest of the shape. So those are some more of the summertime constellations that you can look for. Just remember they'll be very low in the sky towards the southern region and you can pick them out using some of the brightest stars or asterisms to help you identify the rest of the shape. 
Now we're going to switch to a different portion of the sky and I'll talk about a meteor shower that is going on right now and will continue through mid-August. So now we're shifting towards the southeastern part of the sky until we find the constellation Aquarius. Because that is the home to the Southern Delta Aquarius meteor shower, which is going on right now. So I talked about this in a blog article released earlier this month, but a meteor shower is a result from Earth crossing debris left in the orbit of a comet or asteroid. And when we see shooting stars in the sky, those are brief streaks of light that mark the entry of a tiny particle of debris entering the atmosphere. So the leftover dust and things from these comets will burn up as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere and we'll be able to see that as a flash of light. Now, we're looking at the Southern Delta Aquarius shower right now, which is visible from mid-July to mid-August with peak activity on the 28th or 29th of July. So definitely keep an eye out for that next week. Now it's named because the radiant appears to lie in this constellation of Aquarius. And although it favors the Southern Hemisphere, it is still visible from mid-Northern latitudes and you will be able to see these shooting stars. It is considered a strong shower with an average observation rate of 15 to 20 meteors per hour. So I would recommend sitting outside for about a half hour to let your eyes adjust, and then you'll be able to see these streaks of light. There are more meteors after midnight, but it is best viewed in the pre-dawn hours. So maybe wake up a little bit earlier and you'll be able to see this shower. It also overlaps with the Perseids meteor shower in August, but that's more in the northern part of the sky. So maybe you might get the two confused, but just look for the constellation that these are nearby and you'll be able to tell which meteor shower you're looking at. So that is all I have for this star show today. Just remember National Moon Day on the 20th, also the opposition of Saturn on July 20th, and then the meteor shower peaks at the end of the month. Now for next week's video, it will be a little bit different than the past Sky Tonight's. Instead, I'll be doing a question and answer from the audience. So if you have any curiosities about the night sky or the universe in general, I'd be more than happy to answer those. Uh, I'm an engineering physics student at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. So I have a little bit of background in astronomy and space physics. I'd be glad to answer any of those questions that you have. So feel free to comment down below if you would like your question answered in next week's video. And I really look forward to hearing from you all. Happy stargazing.